I know what on earth is going on a 40k lore video on a meme page what is this heresy. Anyway give me a quick second to get into character. <laughs> ah that's much better anyway as many a noise Marine has said. This quiet offense Slanesh. I offer a thousand delights, insanity untold and beauty in its truest form. I stand as the prince of darkness and yet never has a being brought more to the light for I call upon what is truly twisting in your soul. I offer desire and all that such entails but in truth, the most tempting gift that I can offer is that of temptation itself. For fulfillment will always leave you thirsting for more. Slanesh, variously known as she who thirsts, the dark prince, and Slaneth, is one of the four malign beings that claim dominion over the maelstrom known as the warp. He represents a burning desire that flickers within the souls of all mortals, the need for perfection in those who crave and the towering ego of those who have been met with naught but success. Like her kindred however, Slanesh also represent facets of personality less known by her more vibrant followers. Artistic genius, love and beauty and a desire for novelty all reside within those that take their first steps along her darker path but in the end, all shall eventually fall to ruin. Slanesh is the youngest of the gods of chaos, having only existed in her current form since the dawn of the 30th millennium. Her presence was brought about by the foul depredations of the Elder, a galaxy spanning race whose indolent nature led to the birth of the Prince of Chaos, an act so terrible that the entire species, bar a few exiles, was slain by the resulting birth cry. Such a crime against reality affected not only the souls caught in the wake but left a permanent scar upon the universe itself, a gaping hole into hell itself whose name, uttered only in the darkest corners of the Imperium, would eventually resonate as the Eye of Terror. Despite the horror of his existence, Slanesh himself is a figure of beauty, a being of unearthly elegance. Perfection is a myth to most but to those who witness the Dark Prince, such myth becomes reality for her haunting delight transcends mortal description. While her vision changes depending on the one who witnesses her, all agree that no gender is born by this avatar of sensation for she represents the most tantalizing glimpse of both, neither and all. Even her trappings change for delight last for but a second to the jaded though those who have borne the weight of her presence claim that she always carries with her a jade scepter, a treasure more valuable than the stars themselves. The only sign of her demonic nature are two horns that adorn her face but such disfigurement only adds to her twisted allure. After all, who does not truly crave the forbidden? Unlike many gods, the workings of Slanesh find home in men of all kin and kind, be they unrestrained killers, shadowy manipulators or ancient sages. The only law that this lawless being holds care for is that of desire and such a task is a hard one to refuse for what man does not crave for more. Despite this almost omnipresent nature, Slanesh does hold worlds more dedicated than most. The paradise worlds of the Imperium, lands where every indolent whim can be met. Frequently foster cults dedicated to she who thirsts and the upper echelons of nobility know her grace all too well for these are men whose every desire is within reach. What then for such people, other than to grasp for the forbidden? But if Slanesh desires desire itself then it is no surprise that he holds hate in his heart for those who would reject such a base instinct. This enmity manifests itself in the form of Khorne, the fell bloodseeker of the brazen throne whose sole purpose to kill is seen as artless by the Prince of Chaos. While Slanesh keeps warriors aplenty in his arsenal, they are all men and women to whom the act of killing is second in purpose to the hunt for experience and these warriors stand as a mirror's image to the relentless and focused slaughterers of the blood god. Even those who have but briefly journeyed upon the Red Lord's path are dismissed as simple brutes by the scintillating lord for such concepts as honor and duty are alien to a being who can only know true freedom. The followers of Slanesh are an enigmatic lot for they are as defined by their variants as they are separated. Despite this, there are some universal patterns to be found amongst the servants of sensation. Six is seen as a sacred number by those who follow the dark path and many squads of devoted astarts are built around this number. Even more so are rituals built around this concept. Six sacrifices. Six participants. Slanesh loves her games and this is but one more of many. In terms of outfit, Slanesh finds a certain fondness in purple, pink and black though this may more be that the Emperor's children. Her most loyal followers, began in such simple attire. Despite their abundance, humans are not the only servants of the Dark Prince. Many species, knowingly or not, give homage to she who thirsts and even amongst the elder there are those demented enough to forego the caution of their purest kin. 
These Dark Elder do not worship Slanish. In fact they fear her greatly, but they are unwilling to abandon that which led to the Great Fall and so continue to exist in a sick parody, fortifying the very being that wishes naught but to inflict the greatest torment upon their souls. Slanesh's existence, like all of the demented gods, is a self-perpetuating affair. A being for which desire is her only goal can never be satisfied and as the years go by her cravings grow more and more esoteric until eventually the only new experience will be death. This same malaise will forever be the curse for her mortal followers as well. Experimentation and drugs leads to a pursuit for the most dangerous narcotics. Thrill seekers lost to combat throw themselves into the most suicidal fights and those who search for the new feel end up inflicting the most grievous injuries upon themselves. Those who throw themselves at Slanish will soon realize that nothingness is the only heaven they will ever find. What makes Slanish so dangerous is the ease at which one falls into her clutches. Few seek out her attention specifically but find themselves puppets on her string nonetheless. Whether it be the thrill of a fresh kill, the joy of a skill perfected or merely the taste of a fine liqueur. All who wander down the path of pleasure without discipline will find themselves lost and, more horrifying still, few will be able to tell for how does on spot the deluded cultist of sensation amongst the hordes of dilettantes and exhilarationists. It is these men and women who form the armies of Slanesh and it is of no surprise that these battalions of the jaded are terrifying indeed. The primary combatant of the Dark Prince is the Demonet, beautiful creatures bearing vast, organic pincers that beguile their opponents in the grace of their movements. Ranging ahead of these maidens of war ride the seekers of Slanesh, fell creatures as delightful as all their kin but vicious in the extreme, obsessed with the spilling of blood in order to drown out the encroaching malaise that fills their lives. It is upon their twisted steeds that they ride to carnage and these creatures are stranger still for they appear as pink, flesh seahorses that move like lightning and strike out with prehensile tongues, coated in venom. In twisted harmony march the fiends of Slanesh, abominations of flesh made real, combining the most horrific aspects of reptile, insect and mammal into one freakish figure. Leading these vast hordes from palanquins of flesh are the keepers of secrets, the greater demons of Slanesh. These titanic creatures bear upon their physical forms a fragment of the Dark Prince himself and to look upon one of these beasts is to invite madness into one's heart. Their forearms bear weapon and claw in equal measure but rare is it that they ever have to shed blood for none can look upon these fiends and turn away whole. Alongside these incarnations of excess march those who would taste but a fragment of the pleasures they offer. Deranged mortals, desperate for sensation or caught in thrall of these great beings. Throw themselves at enemy lines with abandon and traitorous starts of the foulest kind unleash torrents of baleful energy, driven mad by their search for true freedom. Favored amongst these damned kind come Lucius the Eternal and his brothers and the Emperor's children, led by the demon Primarch Fulgrim, the Serpentine Lord of Excess. A skillful army they are not for despite their talent, no cohesion exists amongst their ranks. But such is not required when fervor abounds for what hope does one have when the enemy you fight craves death as much as life. At the very end, only the mask will remain, dancing eternally upon a field of corpses etched smiling. Unlike her other kindred, Slanesh does not try to keep interlopers out of her domain but instead lures them in. All who enter are but converts to the cause and Slanesh would never try to hide delight from another being. The first land that one will encounter during their journey to Slanesh herself is the excess of riches. Here the skies are golden sheen and even at night it shimmers as though silk. The heavens gleam with diamonds embedded in a vast tapestry and trees of pure gold adorn the paradisic surface. Wealth beyond measure dots this land of bounty and only the hardiest of souls could turn away from such temptation. Those that do not however are damned forever for such trinkets. Like all that chaos offers, a lies dressed in a manner most appealing. One has merely taken deceit in exchange for their immortal soul. Should one pass this delightful land then they will soon enter the excess of sustenance, a smattering of islands, brimming with food and wine that tempers even the most devout soul. No matter your taste, it can be found and each bite and sip chips away at your resolve. Even should one abstain from the vices abound, the air itself lingers with the scent of beautiful perfumes that leaves the head heavy and those that linger too long will soon find themselves prey to the demonettes that roam this land in search of their own sustenance. To survive such an ordeal is no easy task but Slanesh's tricks do not end there. Once free of sustenance they enter adoration. A world unique to each who graces its surface. All that matters truly is that they are received as heroes worthy of legend whether they are glorious war master, respected sages or brilliant scientists. Only those plagued by self-doubt survive unto them. This land lasts but an instant. 
replaced soon with the truth of such matters, a vast ashen plain filled with the corpses of the blind, lost to their delusions. As the images of heroism filter from one's mind, they are plunged into the swirls of achievement. This grand forest, scattered with serene glades, offers refuge from the deluge of sensation previously. And surprisingly, this itself is also a trap for as one wanders, they begin to think deeply, the lulling music of the wood easing one into a state of tranquility. As he thinks, vines adorned with brutal thorns begin to creep and as he ponders the waters of the lakes begin to rise. As he closes his eyes to the fantasies controlling him, the air stills as the very essence of his defeat rears before him. This is the last thing they will see before the ivy throttles the life from him, their last sound, a scream of anguish at despair itself. As always with humans, some survive and to those who make it to this last test, the true joke is finally revealed. It is here that they enter a pose and as the weary wanderer leaves behind the terrors of the previous tests he emerges into a land of the indolent, pleasure dens reeking of narcotics, beaches of the softest sand and music dancing through the azure sky. The arduous journey is soon forgotten and finally peace is found at last until their life is claimed. But there are those of such legendary endurance that such tests can be passed, and wearily they will finally arrive at the object of their journey. Before them stands the legendary palace of pleasure, empty and abandoned, silent except for the heartbeat of the wanderer alone. As the traveler ponders on the lack of defense, vast unseen choirs will break into heat and descending from the monolithic structure will come the dark prince himself. It is at that moment that the wanderer is lost, for there is no point in fighting temptation itself. None know what happens to those who find themselves in this benighted land for none have ever returned sane. Despite this, all know truly that to wander into the lands of excess is to fail for even the Dark Prince, lost in his madness, knows that temptation can never be fought. Unique to former Slaneshofen is, the Dark Prince has an unusual relationship with humanity for it is actually the Elder to which most of her fascination is held. Due to the depredations of their kind, Slanesh was born and only those who hid within the webway or at the far reaches of the galaxy survived. Slanesh desires the souls of these Zenos more than anything else and will go to great effort in order to extract even a single one. In order to protect themselves, the craft were all Delder and the Exodites hide their souls in vast psychic systems called the Infinity Circuit, awaiting the day that Segarach, the Elder God of Trickery, will absorb them and ascend. The Dark Elder, the gloaming kin of the Exodites, instead lurk within the webway, continuing the horrors of their ancestors and using the agony they caused to extend their lives indefinitely. Despite this, Slanesh is patient for she believes no threat exists to her reign. The Elder Gods died to her hand by Cain, Ishan Segarach. Cain was broken into a thousand pieces and scattered onto the vast world ships of the Elder who used such shards to summon forth his avatar. Isha was enslaved and later rescued by Nurgle who keeps her trapped, hopelessly in love. Segarach is the only one that remains free, roaming the webway and instructing the dreaded Harlequins in a task that seems endless and pointless in its entirety. But in the end, she who thirsts will have her due for one cannot chain desire. One cannot fight temptation. You can only survive until one day. Death takes you too. Slanesh. Slanesh answer me. Where's my chainsword? <laughs> Well thank you guys for watching, if you enjoyed this definitely check out Jackie Blob's archive or should I say miniature black library down in the description below I really enjoy all of his posts. If you are into Warhammer 40k and enjoy the lore you will seriously enjoy his stuff. Anyway without further ado be sure to like comment and subscribe for more.